So what is the identity function? I like to think of it as a do-nothing function. It does nothing. We use capital I for the identity as the name of the function. And the identity function, when it eats x, the output is x for all x. It's not very exciting. This is not to be confused with a function that inputs x and outputs 1, or inputs x and outputs 0. Those are not the do-nothing functions. They do something. They turn into a 1 or a 0. Those functions are boring. They're horizontal lines. This function right here, if you graphed it, if I wrote it out as a linear function, it has a slope of 1 and a y-intercept of 0. If you graph it out, it'll look like this. y equals x is the equation. So this is the identity function graph. Function composition uses associativity, which is not really something you need to pay attention to. Uh, so there is an associative property. You do not get commutativity. So h of g is not g of h. We saw an, two examples ago, uh, the f of g was not the same as g of f. So you do not get commutativity, but you get associativity. Identity properties. If you compose any function with the identity, the identity does nothing. So f composed with i, we could write it like this. This is more useful. What does i do to x? Nothing. So i of x just turns into x. So f of i x equals f of x. And what does i do to f of x? It doesn't do anything. So I can apply the i function, the identity function, anything, and it won't change it. So this is f of the identity equals the identity of f. You can see that written right here, or you could, of course, just write f itself. So composing with the identity, either side doesn't change f. Now in the next chapter, we're going to see uh, inverses. And inverses have, uh, have to do with the identity. And f and g, two functions are inverses exactly when they undo each other. Meaning if you do g first, f second, and you get the identity, and if you do f first, g second, and get the identity, that means f and g undo each other, and they're called inverses.